Hello, Previet, everyone, and welcome back to our channel, Inside Out Cooking. Today, we have a very fun, very simple, but very delicious, fuss-free dish to show you all. It is chicken alfredo, one of my personal favorites, as it's very simple. What we'll need is two boneless chicken breasts or thighs, three tablespoons of butter, one onion, and four garlic cloves. We'll also need half a cup dry white wine, one and a half cups heavy cream, 250 grams fettuccine, and one cup grated parmesan. Finally, we'll need a pinch of nutmeg and chopped parsley for garnish. Let's check our fridge, see what we need, and go shopping for the rest. Here's what the final dish is gonna look like. A nice, heaping, beautiful looking plate of pasta. And let's get out to the final spread of the dish. We will be using these ingredients. Again, very simple, but honestly, simplicity can be perfect sometimes. We will start by boiling our water. Also, you're gonna wanna season your water with salt and add a little bit of olive oil. When it's at the boil, you're gonna wanna drop the pasta in, give it a twirl when it's soft and get it nice and submerged. Be sure to check on it every now and again so it doesn't stick to the bottom as the oil probably won't help with that. Now, finally turning our attention towards the chicken, we will be slicing it up into thin, consistent slices or small chunks. Personally, I kind of like my chicken strips to be on the bigger side, but depending on however large you want it, you can cut it that. Just make sure the consistency between all of your pieces is on point. You don't want anything to be undercooked. Butterfly the chicken if you have to even. Once your pasta is done, you're gonna wanna simply drain it before adding a little bit of extra oil to it just to be sure that it doesn't stick together because you're gonna be reserving it for later. So set it aside for now. On a flat surface, spread your chicken out evenly and give it a nice even seasoning of salt and pepper. You'll also wanna be doing this on both sides as you know, you want both sides to taste good. Now in a hot pan, you're gonna to wanna to add a dollop or two of butter, just so you get a nice foamy base at the bottom. Then you'll wanna add your chicken. Now, you're looking for a good hard sear and a nice golden color on each side of your chicken. Don't crowd your pan too hard. If you're overcrowding your pan, you run the risk of letting the whole thing get colder. And then you'll also get that incons inconsistent cooking throughout. So do it in batches if you have to, but that's the color you're kind of aiming for right there. And you want that on both sides. But once that's done, you're just gonna wanna simply reserve it for later into a bowl and keep that dish handy. Turning our attention towards the onion, we will be simply giving this a small to medium dice. I had some people ask me about this technique I use. Um, it's a very good technique to cut your onion, but it requires practice. And if your blade is sharp and you're not used to the technique, you run the risk of slicing right through the onion into your hand. So be very careful and take it slow. Turning our attention towards our garlic, we will simply be peeling it, crushing it, and then chopping it. Alternatively, you can use your garlic press, whatever floats your boat. Personally, I just don't enjoy cleaning my garlic press, so that's why you see me typically not use it in all these videos, but no shame.
but once, once you have that mise en place ready, you're ready to start cooking the base of your sauce. So in that same pan you cook the chicken, you're gonna wanna add that butter and then your onions. You'll notice they'll probably take on a lot of color pretty quickly and that's because your pan has all that delicious chicken flavor on the bottom. That's going right into the onions. But we're not done there and I'll explain a little later after we add our garlic, which you will be cooking until it's nice and fragrant. So roughly around 30 seconds to a minute. Once that's good to go, we will be doing something called deglazing our pan. And we'll be using white wine for that. That simply takes all of the excess chicken flavor on the bottom of your pan and bring it into your sauce. You're also gonna scrape with your spoon. But after that, you're gonna wanna add your heavy cream and then your nutmeg and bring that up to a nice gentle simmer. Stirring as you go. Be sure to take this time to check your seasoning for your sauce. Add a little bit of salt and pepper, but be careful as you're also adding in a salty cheese being the Parmesan, so you don't need too, too much. Now the cheese comes into action here. We simply use Parmesan cheese for that good flavor, and I highly recommend that, but if you're looking for a stringier consistency, you can try adding things like mozzarella or fior de latte, or even a Monterey Jack cheese. But that's simply for consistency. You're not going to really be drawing much flavor from those cheeses. Then we're going to be simply adding our chicken back into the pan, followed by our pasta that we cooked earlier. Then we'll be giving that a good toss to incorporate it fully. But with that, all that's left to do is simply garnish our dish, which we will be doing with chopped parsley. So that'll add a nice herbaceousness to the dish and really some nice green color, which I don't know about you, but I personally love to see in my food. That is our final chicken alfredo dish. Honestly, like I said earlier, one of my favorites because it's so simple, so quick. And honestly, I can't think of many people who dislike chicken alfredo. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please be sure to give us a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps us out. And tune in for the next video.